In this tutorial, I want to introduce you to the topic of taxonomy or categories. This is probably one of the most confusing things about Drupal. Now, Drupal 7 has done a great job in integrating taxonomy or categories into the overall structure of how you set up your website. But for beginner Drupalers, it's still one of the most complex and confusing parts about setting up a Drupal site. Now, this course really isn't able to go into depth into taxonomy but let me give you a basic overview that will help you get a foundation and give you a good solid footing for some further study. All right, so first of all, taxonomy, what is it? It's a way of categorizing your content on your Drupal site. We label the content with the categories and so people can quickly look at a category listing and see all of the content with those keywords attached, i.e. the categories. Let's talk about this in our accommodations content type. Now, one of the confusing things is I can arrange my content in content type, I can arrange it with taxonomy, or I can do both. And this is something that you're going to have to work through and probably read a little bit more about and plan as you plan your Drupal site. A really good resource here would be Visual Quick Start Guides Drupal 7 by Tom Geller. I'd recommend that you pick it up. It would be a good supplement to this course. For instance, if we were to have a taxonomy or a categorization system for accommodations, we could have a vocabulary, which is your main category, called accommodations, and then in that main category have terms of the type of accommodation that each one is. For instance, economy, mid-range, luxury, and ultimate. And then somebody could come and click on one of those categories, say economy, and every node with that term would be presented in a list layout. Let me say that in English. <laughs> if you clicked on economy, all of the articles with economy as a category would be presented in a list. So let's go ahead and set that up for our accommodations content type, understanding that it's probably not necessary in this example, but it's the example that we've got. First thing we need to do is out of vocabulary. And we'll call this accommodations. When we list the terms, these are the terms that are in our accommodations category. And now we can add our terms that I had suggested earlier. Economy. And we can give this a description this is the lowest level of motels, etc. We could give this a URL alias of economy. Under the relations dropdown, we have a parent term and a weight. We don't have any parent terms yet, and this is a way to organize your data in a hierarchical category scheme. Let's click Save. Let's add another one called uh, mid-range. Now, one of the things you want to be careful of when building up your vocabulary list is that you should really use single word vocabularies. It's okay to use multiple words, but in general they can get confusing, especially when you're adding tags. So I'd encourage you stick with the single word, or like I've done here, a dashed word term. And we could give it a URL alias and then uh, luxury and then finally ultimate all right let's go back out and see our accommodation category and we can see that we have four terms under our category now you'll see that Drupal automatically orders them alphabetically. Well, that really doesn't make sense in this case because mid-range should come before luxury. So I can click, drag, and then save. So my taxonomy now is ready for my accommodations content, but there's one more step. The content type for accommodations doesn't allow for taxonomy. So let's go back over to our content types, click on accommodations, and we need to add a field called category. This is going to be 
a term reference. And a term reference is exactly what it sounds like. It references a term that we've set up. There are three ways to select a vocabulary term. A select list, which is a drop-down list, check boxes and radio buttons, or autocomplete, which is where you just type in the word and it autocompletes for you. The only problem with this is that someone with enough access can actually type in a new term, which is not what we want here. So I'm going to suggest for something like this, where you only need one term for a node to appropriately categorize it, that you use checkboxes or radio buttons or select list. We'll use checkboxes. It just makes it simpler that way. Click Save. It's going to ask us which vocabulary we want to apply. And of course, we only have one, so we'll stick with accommodations. And as usual, it's going to ask us to set this up. The default category, economy, mid-range, luxury, and ultimate. How many values can we have? One. Uh, and that way it shows up as radio buttons and not checkboxes. And again, the vocabulary is in accommodations. So we have our new field. Let's go over to our content. If we go to Rod's Restful Roost and edit it, you'll now see at the bottom we have the ability to select which category it belongs in. Well, Rod's Roost is definitely low scale, so we'll click Economy and click Save. Now you'll notice when you view the article, the category is Economy. If I click on the word Economy, all of the accommodations at the economy level will show up as a list with just a brief amount of intro text, and I can then go in and view the entire content. So it's a quick way for your users to get information of a similar category for any content that you have set up on your site. That's just a really brief introduction to taxonomy. There are some great tutorials at drupal.org on this entire issue, and it's something that you're going to want to think through as you build your site. I will say this, taxonomy isn't absolutely necessary when you're using content types well, but on a large site with a lot of content, content types and taxonomy done together in a well-planned out way can really help your users find what they need on your site. And after all, isn't that what we're building a website for?